Hi, this is Andy from Andy's Travel Blog. I want to show you a photo editing video today uh, where I take an image that I've, I've shot with my Sony and, and I really bring it to life in front of you. Now, I'm known to do this from time to time uh, just to give you a glimpse of, of how I go about uh, making these pictures great uh, or what I consider to be great and a lot of you agree as well. And so I want to show you how I take how something looked and turn it into how it felt, if that makes any sense. Uh, so I shot this image today from my Luggard Road spot in Hong Kong, and I'll link to my video about how to find that spot uh, in the uh, in the article uh, around this. Uh, but I shot this with my Sony a7R2, and I used a Sony 16 to 35 millimeter wide angle lens at about 19 millimeters. It's not important that you have a Sony. It's not important that you have a Canon or a Nikon or anything like that. Any camera that you have with you is the best camera for you to have with you in that moment. Uh, so anyways, we're going to be uh, using uh, Adobe Lightroom today, and then we're also going to be using uh, a piece of software that's owned by Google, actually. It's, it's called the Nick Collection. Uh, and Nick is a company that was bought out by Google, and we're gonna be using their Color Effects Pro 4 software. If, if you're really into photo editing and, and, and shooting uh, pictures like this, and, and you don't wanna get crazy into the details of everything. Uh, Color Effects Pro 4 is fantastic. It gets you most of the way there without having to go in and do like color channel mixing or anything like that on Photoshop. So I highly recommend it. I think it's worth $150. Uh, and yeah, so I tell you what, let's go into Lightroom and I can show you everything that I'm talking about. Okay, so let's begin. We are here at Luggard Road and I took what I consider to be a great image, one worth editing and showing to you as part of the picture of the week, may even make it into the portfolio. Now I do have an image very similar to this uh, that I've shot before uh, in January and I love the image and so I've always been wanting to uh, take another uh, attempt at it, see if I can get another similar looking shot. So I'm here at my familiar Luggard Road spot and the clouds were moving very quickly. Now it was kind of a hazy morning in Hong Kong but it was still still worth shooting, I figured, uh, especially because the clouds are moving so fast. So whenever that happens, I tend to try to put a neutral density filter on the front of my lens so I can, if you notice, these clouds are really streaky here. And so you, you get a cool sense of movement from the clouds, even though the rest of this is very still, very solid. So if you look up here, you'll see I shot this at f8 and ISO 100 at 19 millimeters. There's actually a uh, one minute, seven second exposure uh, that I used a, uh, I think I used a Teffen. Um, this was a three or 10 stop ND filter. I think it was a 10 stop. But anyways, this was very early in the morning, but I wanted to get some good cloud movement as well. This is just before the sun actually rose. And I think this is going to work uh, for what I'm trying to do with it. Now, uh, I tried to make sure this was as level as I could in camera so we wouldn't have any distortion effects to deal with. Uh, and if you see up here, you click the I button, you'll see it's 42.4 uh, megapixels. It's a beautiful image. We have lots of detail. And so if I click here, wait for it to re-render and you see, you get right up close and it's still very, very detailed. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll hit the I button a couple of times to make that go away. And so we have a full image to work with. So the first thing I wanna do here is I look at the histogram up here and I see that we have a lot of information in the shadows. We don't have that much in the highlights yet. So that means I can probably uh, increase the whites or increase the highlights a bit and see if we can kind of really stretch the dynamic range. Now, these, Sony's cam these Sony cameras are known for having great um, dynamic range. So there's a lot of information that we can pull out of these shadows. And so uh, there are some people who don't like doing this to this extreme, I kind of do, so that's what we'll do. So I'll take the shadows and I'll bump them up all the way to plus 100. Seems kind of crazy. Uh, if I hit the backslash button, you'll see this is before and after. And I like this because I'm, getting, I'm still getting detail in, this, in these shadows. And if I bump this down a little bit, and you'll see it just kind of affects the image just slightly. So I like seeing what it looks like at plus 100. We might pull it back just a little bit. Uh, that's probably okay there. And then let's pull the highlights down too. We're very close to having kind of a blown out area over here. And so if I pull the highlights down, you'll see that mainly hits the sky. So all of my lights here are still fairly bright. Uh, but when I pull back the highlights, it's only pulling it out of the sky. And I'm okay with that because I can bring that back later. So now what I'll do is hold the Alt or Option key and I'll take the whites and I'll just start moving the slider to the right. And you'll see these little pixels pop up. Those are little areas where the sky or where that image is blown out or where, that's, where that pixel of detail is blown out and the different colors show you which channel that it's blown out on. So the red pixels are blown out uh, with a red value. The blue ones are blown out with a blue value, et cetera, et cetera. 
So if I leave this here, you'll see this is a very bright image at plus 61. Now, if I went way plus 100, you'll see this really blows out uh, kind of the whole image. So let's try to pull this back. Now, I, I'm okay because this is a cityscape image. I'm okay with a couple of these pixels being blown out. Uh, you're just gonna get that with, uh, the, you know, with the city lights and all that. So I think I'm okay there. And then let's take the blacks. Make sure that I go all the way. And you're going to see some of these pixels start creeping up at the bottom. I'm okay with that. I'm okay having some areas of the picture uh, that are dark. So uh, I'm going to let that go. And you'll see that I'm, I'm here. It's, it's a little bit different version of the image. It's not quite as bright as I want. I'm going to bump the whites just a little bit, bring the highlights back just a little bit. And so if I go before and after, this is my before image, this is the after image. So if you, you see there's just a little bit more punch in this image. You'll see it's kind of, it looks kind of hazy here, a little bit more punch. It still seems there's a little bit of color we're not seeing here. I'm gonna pull the highlights back just a little bit more. We can really get that later, and then what I might do is increase the exposure, uh, you know, 0.2 value. Now, as far as the white balance goes, as shot, we're at a value of 5450 and minus 11. If I default to the daylight value, that's pretty good. It's a little purple. Uh, let's go to the cloudy value. It's purple and it's kind of orange, very warm. Shade is like, ah, world's on fire. So let's not do that. Let's go back to daylight. Uh, daylight's okay. And let's see what Lightroom thinks is good. Uh, Lightroom, I found, is very insane when it comes to uh, the A7R2. So uh, as shot works okay. And I think if I go to daylight, I really like that value. Let's pull back some of this, uh, this tint just a little bit. And that gets me to where I'm pretty happy. Okay. Now, as far as clarity, vibrance, and saturation, it's very easy to take the vibrance uh, sort of temptation and, and drip vibrance all over your photos, uh, or you can de-vibrance it a little bit, makes a little bit of saturation, uh, decrease and get like this real gritty, grungy sort of look. Um, I don't think that's the image I'm trying to go for. And so for right now, I just want to make my basic edits right here. I don't want to take the sharpening down. Okay. Uh, and as always, I should have done this in the beginning, enable profile corrections and remove chromatic aberrations. Now, this image was leveled in camera. I do want to see if Lightroom thinks it can make any enhancements for me. And in this case, it's, it, so I'll, I'll click this auto button. In this case, everything was pretty well in level, so I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, horizon looks pretty good. Uh, now let's just see one thing. Don't need to worry about post-crop vignetting yet. I'd love to get through the image first, and then let's think about the best way of cropping it. Uh, and then let's click through some profiles here and see if this gives us a different image. Um, now that's camera deep looks pretty good. Camera landscape's a little too blown out, but they're just, these are just a couple of ones that I found uh, online um, that are, uh, and there, there are some defaults you have in here. And then these are uh, some interesting ones that I found online. I'll see if I can figure out where I found those. And these are just different ways of interpreting the values. So what I did here is I shot this in RAW. And, um, you know, these are, this is what the interpretation of this raw image is. Now, standard here actually looks pretty close to Adobe standard. So I'm going to try going with a standard here. And let's just see how that compares to the Vivid. Okay, so Vivid is completely different. Let's go with a Vivid red. Okay, Vivid's not going to work. Let's go with standard. Okay. Now, if you'll notice, we have a little bit of a purple tint to it. So I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to pull down my values just a little bit. Okay. So that looks good for now. So what I want to do now is I'm going to right click. And as I mentioned, we are going to use Nick Color Effects Pro 4 software. So I'm going to go to edit in. Now I could send this over to Photoshop if I want to, uh, but I have a little plug in here to go to Color Effects Pro 4. Now, when I click that button, it's going to ask me if I want to edit a copy with the Lightroom adjustments, and that's what I want to do. Now, I'm going to send it over there in a TIFF. I'm going to send it over there 16-bit. It's going to be a massive file. Let's go ahead and send it over at 300 resolution with no compression. Uh, this file is going to end up being about 250 megabytes. So you can do like three or four of these before my MacBook explodes. Uh, thankfully, I'm uh, at home at my headquarters here where I have uh, kind of backup hard drives out the wazoo so I don't really need to worry about too much of the uh, too much of the space. So this is Color Effects Pro 4. Let me see if I can drag it down here and really fill the image. Okay, we're gonna do this. We're gonna have to let me resize this a little bit. You'd think if I was prepared for these, I would have already had this resized, but you, know, you get what you pay for and I do not charge you money to read the blog. 
Uh, speaking of that, be sure to click on the ads on the blog. I'm just kidding. Uh, okay, so here we are at my image, um, and there's a couple of different filters that I have just kind of set up, and I have what I call basic decadence. I don't know why I have it called that, but whatever, it works for me. And so it has a layer of detail extraction, and then it has a pro contrast layer. And so if I turn this off and then I turn it back on, you'll see that it, it it really digs out some of the some of the the contrast in this in this cloud. Now, of course, I see all sorts of dust spots and all sorts of other bits um, that I'll need to go back in and get rid of, but that's fine. I'll just go back and do that later. So I'll add another filter to this, and uh, let's go to brilliance and warmth. Let's add some warmth back to this. So I like that, and let's add some perceptual saturation. I don't know quite what that does, but I tend to like it. So if I take this off and take this back on, you'll see it's real subtle, but you can probably see a big difference right here. So I'll do that. That looks pretty solid. That looks pretty good to me. And what I love about uh, this Color Effects Pro is that you can really build your own sort of filters. And so I notice that there's quite a bit of red that's just killing the histogram right now. You always want to keep your eye on that. And so I'm going to add a little polarization. I'm going to see if I can bring out the blues a little bit. And I do want to, let's see, it's probably a little too much. Let's see if I can rotate the blues around. This, this filter treats everything just like a circular polarizer. Uh, and I think this looks pretty good. You'll see the difference here and then up here a little bit. And really, I'm not as interested in changing the entire color of the image. I just want the eye to have something else to look at besides all that red. Okay, so let's, I'm just rotating this around and seeing which part of the image is affected. So I'd love to have it all over the sky and it looks like we're pretty close there. Okay, so now I'm going to add a contrast color range. So we're really killing on the reds right now, and this looks really, really miserable. So I'm going to pull everything down here, and I kind of reset my brightness to, you know, let's pull this down a little bit, and then reset my color contrast. Okay, so let's set this over here. We'll notice it's going to really affect the reds. And let's see. I'm going to put this back. It was on the reds over here. Let's see if I, if I add in this contrast what it's going to do. So it's really taking a little bit of character out of my yellows here. So you know what, I'm actually gonna get rid of that, but let's, let's add a different sort of effect here, okay? So uh, let's go into portraits and let's see if we can really like almost emphasize some of the, uh, the, br the, the fogginess and the haze. So I added a sunlight filter here, which yeah, it probably takes this away a little bit too much. Um, Pull this in, so it gives it kind of this very mystical sort of look. So that's not terrible. Now let me try a, uh, a nature one, or sorry, a landscape one called Indian Summer. Now I really like this one. So I tell you what, let's get rid of the sunlight filter. And then so we have this Indian Summer and I can, I can deactivate it and activate it. And it's not really that big of an effect right now, but if I change my method, now uh, let's go over here and see if it, if, it, if it has a change, if it makes a change on anything. Now, this is more to enhance foliage and things like that, but you can sometimes trick it into doing these really cool effects. Now, in this case, it didn't really do that much, so I'm swinging a miss there. Um, let's go to a classical soft focus. Now, I do like this. Now, it, it really hits the brightness and blows out a few parts of my image. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna pull this strength down a little bit, and let's go from soft focus to diffusion. And I, I really like this. So we, we have kind of this softer focus, kind of hazy image, but if I check on and off, you'll see it, it just looks very rich, very contextual. Okay, so on top of this, let's go back into, uh, let's go back into landscape and add my sunlight filter. And so now it's a little too much, but we're, we're not, we're not we're not outside of the realm of this being really good. Okay, so let's add this negative, let's pull the saturation down a little bit. Brightness, it's really stepping that up a lot. Let's pull this down just a little bit. And let's make my light temperature, uh, let's pull it to that, or try to match that 5500 and give it just a little bit more light here. Okay, so this actually looks pretty cool. Now, this is taking the image a completely different direction than I originally was gonna show you, but I really do like this. I think it's 
Very, very interesting. Now, if we want to just go crazy with this, and that's what I like about this Nick Color Effects software stuff, uh, you can really go nuts with it a little bit. And all of these changes are, uh, they're non-destructive changes. So if I don't like this, then I can just immediately delete it and it, and it goes back just fine. So what I did is kind of went to this more gritty sort of look uh, called a bleach bypass effect. Um, so this gets a little crazy. You start to see some grain in here. You can see a lot of dust spots from my sensor uh, from being open so long. If I pulled it back, the contrast a little bit. Does that make it better? I'm not sure it makes it that much better. Uh, let's pull the brightness back up. So let's see here. Let's go ahead and leave that on just because I want to. And then if we wanted to go like really crazy and nuts and probably way too far, here is what we could do. At that point, you can't even tell it's Hong Kong. It looks like somebody shot this with film and then placed that film in an oven. Okay, so let's take a look back here and let's really rebuild this from the beginning. Okay, so I am, uh, and you can change the orders of this if you want to. So this is the image that I had out of Lightroom. And then we added a detail extractor, pro contrast, brilliance and warmth, a classical soft focus look, added some sunlight and kind of hazed it up a little bit and then a, ble a bleach bypass layover. And now I'm going to come over the top of that and I'm going to add one more layer of this pro contrast. Okay, so it's gonna take a little bit. So there we go. So I added some dynamic contrast and then I need, I really, I'm blowing out a lot of this red channel here. So I'm gonna try to correct my color cast here and see if that pulls back the reds just a little bit. And this is before I had that second layer and after the second layer. And I do like that, that's pretty solid. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and click the save key. So it's gonna save this image and it's gonna take just a little bit. Okay, so now we're back and it's wrapping up the saving of the image. We use the miracle of science and technology to uh, not make you suffer through the boredom that I just suffered through. Okay, so this is now the image that we're, we're working with and let's go back to my original image here um, and let's go back here. So this is what we had when we sent it to the Nick Color Effects Pro software and then this is what we were looking at before. So before and then here's where we're at now. So you'll see the colors are very, very drastically different. We brought out, brought out a lot of the pinks and the, and the blues and the oranges. And this area is just a little bit blown out here. So what I want to try to do now is I'm going to call some double processing. Let's pull down the highlights a little bit. Let's bring up the shadows a little bit more. So this is going to give it a very holographic sort of feel to it. And then let's see how far we can push these whites. I mean, you can see that that area starts blowing out really quickly. So I tell you what, let's try to kill the whites a little bit. That looks good. Man, let's bring the blacks up. I don't like bringing the, bringing the blacks, the, uh, the black tones up too much. Uh, let's do this. Let's bring them down just a little bit. Okay, so here is like after we got out of Nick, here's where we are now. I like that. It's pretty balanced. Let's just add a little bit of contrast and then a little bit of vibrance. Now we're getting a little too much there, so maybe we should pull down the saturation a little bit globally. That looks pretty solid there. Maybe just a little bit more vibrance. Now, when it comes to clarity, if you add clarity across the whole image, it's going to apply clarity to the clouds. Likewise, if you want to get rid of the clarity, it's going to do that to the clouds as well. Uh, clouds, in my experience, don't have that much clarity to them. So what I do is I, I select my K key, or I could go up here to the adjustment brush, and I'm going to hold the Option key and click Reset here. And I want to go to a clarity brush. Let's assign this a value of 
uh, 31, somewhere around there. This is very unscientific, and you can adjust this after the fact. My flow and density are about 83, highly feathered. So I'm going to go here and maybe increase the size of my brush by rolling up my scroll wheel a little bit. I'm just going to start painting in some clarity here. I just want clarity in the buildings, uh, so make the buildings pop a little bit more. I don't even necessarily want uh, clarity in the uh, in the river or in Victoria Harbor there. And so what I can do is I can uh, reduce the size of my brush to get into more of these detail spots. And you'll notice I have this auto mask key on. And what that does, it, it tries to keep everything isolated to the building. So if it detects a very rapid change in surface from buildings to this, it's not going to automatically write on that. Now, if I click my O key or I check this button down here, uh, I can see where my uh, color has been applied to or where my clarity has been applied. So when I do this, you can see I can get up on the buildings and it looks like it caught a little bit of that other side. So what I can do is hold the Option key, and I can likewise get rid of certain areas that I don't want to have this clarity. So what I'll do there, since I have my auto mask still selected, is I'll click on the river, and then I will go right up against that building. And most of the time, it will recognize that I probably don't want to be on that building, uh, and it will uh, only remove that clarity from the river itself instead of going onto the building. So that auto mask is a pretty cool function. Okay, so let's do this, and it looks like it came on back onto the building a little bit because you see it's not red. I'll try to fill that in a little bit there, and let's make sure we get a little bit more of the IFC here. So we're going to go over here. We're going to do the same thing on the other side of the island. We're just going to paint some clarity over this, and again, like Bob Ross would tell you, this is, this is the part where this becomes art and not as much about photography anymore. Uh, if you like it and you think something uh, looks great and you think I'm a moron for adding more clarity, then don't add any more clarity. Um, it needs to look right for you. You need to be happy with it. You are your own customer. And if you create images that you like, uh, a lot of people are going to like those. Okay, so, um, so I've done that. I can increase the clarity if I want, and now it looks ridiculous. Let's pull this back to about a 27. And then if I hit this button here, you'll see what it looks like before and after. So I like the after. It brings a little punchiness, a little bit of contrast. It makes these dark areas pretty dark, uh, which helps separate them from a very light image. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some graduated filters. So I'm going to select my M key, or I can go to this button right here. This is going to be a graduated filter. Now I'm still on my clarity uh, menu from before. I'm going to change this to exposure. And I'm going to pull this back a, uh, that's two stops. Let's, let's pull this down one stop. What I'm going to do is click at the top of the image. I'm going to hold down my shift key, and I'm going to click and drag down. Now holding the shift key makes, means that no matter what I do here, it's going to be level. If I remove the shift key, I can actually do this on an angular basis, uh, which I may want to do because of where the sun is coming up. Okay, so I'm going to do this, and basically the filter will be 100% here, and it graduates to 50% here and then 0% here. And you can do that same sort of overlay thing by either checking this down here or clicking O or typing O. So you'll see it's 100% here and it kind of fades. So what I can do is I want this to be 100% across a little bit more. And let's pull this value down a little bit to about one and a half stops. So that's good right there. Um, what we're looking for is we want to see it have a sort of nighttime effect over here where you can really see the daylight coming in over here. Now, when it comes to the bottom, let's, let's hold the shift key and we're going to bring up a vertical or a completely horizontal uh, filter. So that looks a little too dark, but I do like that sort of gradient. So what I just did is I, I pulled this bottom uh, area right here. I pulled this just out of frame a little bit. So we still have this fade from black into uh, this, this bright scene. Now, I do need to up the, uh, should I increase the exposure? No, I like where that is. That's, that looks good. I tweaked the highlights just a little bit. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so kind of one of the last steps that we need to do here is remove some of these uh, filter uh, or sensor dust spots. Now, if you've been doing photography for a long time, no doubt you've been looking at these the entire time, haven't been able to pay attention to a single thing that I did. So if that's the case, then I apologize. Go back and watch the video later. Uh, so what I'm going to do is open up my spot removal tool. I'll hit the Q key, which is great if you can see the obvious dust spots like this. But if I would like a little bit of help, I can go to the Visualize Spots or click the A key or type the A key. So I do that, and anywhere where I see these little circles here, those are going to be my sensor dust spots. Now what I'll typically do is I try to put the mouse over the center of that and try not to get it too far outside of the circle. Now what's great about this new version of Lightroom is you can actually click and drag a little bit if you need to. And Lightroom is going to make its best approximation and find a very similar uh, looking uh, 
area and try to replace it using that. And if you're just doing this for web, it's not going to be that important. Uh, it's, it's not incredibly easy to notice these on the web. Now, if you want to print this out, then you definitely want to go in and spend some time and really go through and do what I'm doing here and just clicking through every single area of the image uh, looking for um, areas where you have these sensor dust spots. So here's one right here that I didn't notice before. And so I click on that. You'll see it just kind of pastes over that area there. Uh, so let's go back here, and if, if I want to go through this whole thing, I, I, I simply will. It just takes a little bit of time. Now, if you notice when I zoom in, it's a little little grainy. What I can do here is just kind of scroll down a little bit, and let's apply some noise reduction. Let's do a 23 noise reduction. That should be fine. It still leaves us plenty of detail here in the image. Now, whenever we do these big sort of like seven different uh, Color Effects Pro filters, uh, you'll see that it... it tends to add some grain. And so what we'll do is we do the noise reduction, then let's go ahead and add some sharpening. Uh, I don't like doing sharpening in Lightroom. I like doing it in Photoshop with a high pass filter, but let's just put like a layer of 50 on the sharpening. And then if I hold the option key, I need to mask out like the clouds. I don't want sh uh, clouds to be sharp. So if I hold the option key or alt key and start working this masking slider to the right, anything that you see outlined in white will be sharpened, anything that is pure black will not be sharpened. So in this case, I can actually go to you know, 94. Basically, I want to go until I start seeing some clouds and then go back up a little bit. So let's go to 95. Now yeah, it's a little bit more. Let's just go to 100 because why the heck not? Now only the buildings are going to be sharpened and the rest of this is going to be uh, protected. So what I'm seeing is that we're getting, we have this hotspot right here that it's probably just over processed on my part. It's probably on me, it's not on you or anything else. Um, what we can do is let's add some saturation into this area just to see if we can pull some color out. So I'm gonna open an adjustment brush. And again, you can do this either by going here or clicking the K key or typing the K key, sorry. So let's reset my exposure and let's add a saturation value of 29. This is gonna be too much, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and type the O key so I can see exactly where I'm applying it to. Uh, so let's add some saturation only to the sky here. Now, if we were in Photoshop, this would be a lot easier to do because I could just create a new layer uh, and then mask in whatever changes I wanted to make. But again, this is a uh, Lightroom and Nick Color Effects um, tutorial, and that's fine. So um, what we'll sh what I'll show you later, uh, or later today, uh, if you're watching this on the day this post goes live, is I'll show you a tutorial that goes over. Um, uh, Photoshop uh, much more deeply and much better than I could ever show you. So anyways, we have this layer. I've now covered everything and I see a little bit of a difference. So if I turn this off and I turn it back on, you can see there is a bit of difference. Not really the difference I was going for. It's really affecting these areas up here, which honestly I'm not too upset about. Uh, so yeah, now the only other things that I would want to do here is I can go in and brighten up some of these areas. And so if I go to an adjustment brush, I'm going to hold the option key and click reset here. And I can go to a uh, dodge button where it's just a 0.25 exposure enhancement. And then I can go here and make these bright areas a little brighter. You know, it's maybe a little too obvious. You have to be careful about being too obvious when you're doing this. Um, you may want to lower your flow and your density and that'll help too. And so let's see if I can work on these edges a little bit. It still doesn't look great, but that's fine. We're just gonna try to blend in these edges just slightly. Okay, so dodging and burning is a way to add depth. It's a way to add uh, shape and character to some of these lighting bits. You know what, I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna get rid of it because that just looked terrible. So let's, let's add some more subtle adjustments here. You see that? So we're adding these very, very slight adjustments. And if I want to make these a little stronger, I can go back in later and increase the, uh, the forcefulness of it. Basically, I want to take an area that was already light and try to make it just a little bit lighter. And this is going to add a little bit of shape uh, to this image. You most frequently see this done on like portraits and things like that uh, to apply or to show some roundness and some curvature. Uh, to people. And so let's click new up here and I'm going to go to a burn layer and that just means I'm going to make the dark areas a bit darker. And I'm going to, a lot of these areas are going to overlap where you have this transition from light to dark. And I'm just, where I see these like tendrils of clouds, I'm just going to try to 
darken those a little bit to uh, enhance the effect just ever so slightly. This is the part where you get to make all of your Bob Ross jokes, say these happy little tendrils. And let's make this guy a little darker. And again, if I mess up, I can just hold my option key and I can remove that. So that works too. But in this case, I do want him a little darker. Let's try to add some, a little bit of darker right here just to separate this from that very, very hot spot uh, just above that. Okay, so now if I turn off my adjustment brushes, just look up in this area here, and you should see just a subtle difference. Just a subtle difference. Okay, so at this point, we have wrapped up this image. Uh, I would call this a uh, maybe not a portfolio ready image quite yet, but it definitely has that potential. The things I loved about this image are the uh, are the sky here. Uh, some things that aren't as great about this image is this hot spot right here. So what I could do is click my uh, type my R key, and I could see if there's a way of cropping this out. So what I could do because I have the A7R and it has so many megapixels. I tend to get a lot of uh, a lot of leeway when I go into cropping something like this. So I want to try to keep this horizon as close to that, that line of thirds composition as I can. And I want to keep these guys on their individual lines of third as well. So if I do this, honestly, this is probably more of a technically true rule of thirds composition, but I just don't like it. You, you don't get a lot of the city here. And so what if we do this? Because the, the sky is interesting, but it's not that amazing. So what if we did this? So let's move this here. Let's put the horizon closer to that top third line. And you know what? I really like this. Now what I can do is I need to bring down this neutral density, uh, this graduated filter a little bit more. And maybe we can straighten it a little bit now. And let's make it even a little darker. So that's good, and I'm gonna bring the shadows up in this a little bit, just so those clouds uh, the, those clouds aren't made too dark. Okay, so let's take this off, put it back on, and I really think we have a winner here. So I'm gonna pull this down just a little bit more. Perfect, let's go in. Everybody hates me for doing this, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Let's add a little bit of post-crop vignetting, and I think we have a winner here. So. Uh, thank you much for watching. Sorry. <laughs> I do these things in one take, so you're going to hear some random little words from me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and, uh, and we will see you soon. Thanks for tuning in. Travel well, and we'll see you next time.